lot's been written about how robots and AI are going to take our jobs. The fear is they're going to cause massive unemployment in the coming decades. It's something I'm asked about all the time. But are robots and clever algorithms really going to cause the sort of mass technological unemployment that the economist John Maynard Keynes warned us about a hundred years ago? First, let's consider the terms we're using. When you think of a robot, do you think of something like this? Or this? Or perhaps this? These are the stereotypical images we've been fed by filmmakers and science fiction writers. But they are not representative of the type of robot we're likely to meet over the next few years. The robots we're going to encounter in the near future will be softer, friendlier creatures, able to work in our homes or alongside us when we're at work. This is Baxter, and he's the best-known example of a new bee breed of so-called collaborative or soft robots that are safe to work alongside humans in factories, assembly shops and warehouses. Unlike their caged predecessors, collaborative robots do not have the strength nor the power to make sudden movements that might injure humans who are in the vicinity. And these robots are much less expensive than previous generations. Small and medium-sized businesses can earn a return on buying or leasing a collaborative robot in just a year or two. Suddenly, smaller manufacturers, for example, double glazing makers, plastic converters, precision engineering shops and so on, can dramatically increase their productivity using robot labour. So can distributors, warehousing business and even constructors and builders in certain situations. We're also going to see many robots that don't look like traditional robots. We've already got robotic pets, robots to look after the elderly, and robot firefighters. But the real question is, will the new generation of robots steal our jobs? The short answer is that physical robots will redistribute our jobs. Many manufacturing processes that were offshored during the first phase of globalisation are likely to return to the developed world as robotics and 3D manufacturing make it more economical and flexible to make things on home territory. The resulting unemployment in the manufacturing sector is likely to hit the developing world harder than the developed world, which is why China is itself rushing to build its own robots. The nation hopes to maintain its manufacturing arbitrage through automation. However, the role of AI in the workplace is a more subtle and less visible form of automation that is already replacing many human workers. Voice recognition and response technology is rapidly replacing thousands of call centre workers, while AI algorithms and the application of big data are replacing junior underwriters in insurance offices, loan assessors in banks, and many junior lawyers and paralegals. On the face of it, wide-scale unemployment seems inevitable, as robots replace manufacturing workers and AI empties out the offices. But over the last couple of decades, shifting employment patterns have shown that when one type of job disappears, completely new jobs spring into existence. Twenty years ago, how many tattoo parlours were there on our high streets? How many dog hairdressers were styling fur? And how many personal trainers were threatening to get us into shape? Society still has 
many needs that remain unfulfilled, as is evidenced by the growth of Deliveroo riders, Uber drivers, laundrap users and drone pilots. I'm confident that over the next two decades, there are enough unmet needs in developed societies to keep general unemployment low. And we are finding new services, products and things we need all the time. The future does, of course, mean that many workers will have to retrain throughout their lives and some inevitably will be casualties of technological change. The short-term outlook for the employment market is one of constant upheaval. Over the next two decades, human jobs will change rapidly and dramatically as robots and AI automation become more widely used. The resulting boost to productivity and economic growth will ensure there are plenty of jobs for humans even if it will feel as though we're constantly learning new skills. In the longer term, however, I'm not so sanguine about the prospects for full human employment. I think it is clear that we will have to tax the robots to replace the contributions that would have been made by the human workers that they will displace. But I also think the additional wealth produced by automation, may enable governments to pay their peoples a wage, even when there is no work to be done. The prediction made by John Maynard Keynes may turn out to be right after all. He thought there would be widespread technological unemployment by the year 2030. I suspect this won't now occur until well after 2040. But he wasn't far off.